Does your home suffer from foundation failure? Is it part of this $13 billion a year industry? Texas's hot weather, unstable soils, and questionable foundation qualities should make you sweat. Well, today on Your Real Estate Advisor, some foundation experts will answer your most dreaded questions. We'll be right back with some earth-shaking news right after a check of today's headlines. Now, live with the ins and the outs and the do's and the don'ts of Texas real estate, this is Your Real Estate Advisor. Brought to you by Bankers Financial Group. Welcome to the show. I'm Chet Wilkie, your real estate advisor. Foundation failures can be avoided. It's a matter of paying close attention now or paying for it later. And later is going to cost a lot more. Many Texans are already contributing to this $13 billion a year business. And if they're not, they probably will sooner or later. There are a couple things that affect a foundation. Primarily your soil conditions, maybe the builder that you use and the ongoing maintenance program you do or don't do. And if you want to know the difference between slab, post-tension, or pier and beam foundation systems and how to avoid big trouble, then you need to pay close attention to today's show. We'll explain the need for gutters, downspouts, irrigation systems, root barriers, French drains, retaining walls, and much more. So, if you have a question about your home's foundation, call us today at toll-free number is 1-877-977-TXCN or email us at txcn.com by clicking on Your Real Estate Advisor. Call in early and we'll get to you as soon as we can. That number again is 1-877-977-977-TXCN. We'll be happy to answer your foundation questions or any other questions related to Texas real estate. If you don't have any sticky doors or hairline cracks around the windows, maybe your foundation is okay. Let's see what you think after we talk with our experts. Let me introduce to you the author of a book entitled Residential Foundation Performance. We have Tom Witherspoon with us and fellow expert Randy Mobley. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. It's hot outside in Texas, isn't it, huh? Hot and dry. <clears throat> well, you know, I'm told that Texas is more susceptible to foundation trouble than anywhere else in the country because that $13 billion figure we mentioned, what do you think, more than half might be in Texas? I would say more than half, just on the research that I did. We have a problem, we have very expansive soils and we have what they call a semi-arid climate. It gets very dry in the summer, very wet in the spring, and those two extremes makes the clay bearing soil swell and shrink. So Randy. What causes foundation failure? Give us a couple of big issues. Well, foundation failure is caused by a, a number of things. You can have uh, the dry soils, of course, where the, the ideal situation on the house would be to have a perfect moisture control all the way around. Any, any side that dries out or stays too wet, the foundation can shift and, and move in different directions. So that's why there's probably a little bit more trouble with homes that are built next to creeks. Now, everybody likes to be on a creek. Right. And they want to get as close as they can because they want that view of the creek and trees. But that could cause more problems in the future. Oh, absolutely. And you also have a problem known as slope failure, where the actual uh, part of the hill or the slope actually wants to work its way into the creek from a natural, you know, phenomenon. So th there's... Uh, the different types of foundations we mentioned earlier in the show, of all three foundation types, the slab, post-tension, pier and beam, what do you think? What's the strongest foundation you can build, Tom? If properly done, the pier and beam, if you do a geotechnical report prior to building on the site and you find out how deep to put the piers and you do the piers and you completely separate the foundation from the expansive soil, you will never have any problem. Okay, that geotechnical report for our viewers, it has to do with soil analysis and soil engineering tests of some sort, right? That is correct. Normally you go with a drilling rig and you take samples of the soil at different depths down at least 10 foot below the known expansive soil layer so you know really where to terminate the piers. So how do you know how far down to go? The, the soil analysis from the uh, soil engineering people will tell you how far to drill to, before you have to hit, do you have to hit some kind of a rock, a bedrock or gray rock or? Well, you'd prefer to hit a rock, and in this area, in most cases, you can hit a rock. If it's not economical to go as deep as necessary to hit a rock, you can go to a non-expansive area and bell the <clears throat> bottom of the piers to keep them from moving upward and downward and still have the bearing capacity that you need. You know, in today's marketplace, 
a lot of new homes are being sold. And I, I'm just throwing a number out, maybe 60% of our homes sold right now are brand new homes. I mean, there's a lot of new home, build, home builders selling houses to people. So how does a consumer know what to do about a foundation? Because you know how it is, they go out and look at the house, and they say, oh, those the trenches are in there, and there's plumbing pipes sticking up, and boy, that looks great. We're going to get a foundation poured pretty soon. We're going to start seeing stick in the air, and they're getting all excited about that house. But now's the time when that foundation, before it gets poured, that's probably the time to take a little bit extra caution. What kind of advice can you give a buyer? I think in every case, the engineer that designed the foundation either needs to inspect that foundation before it's poured or have a representative that he feels comfortable with to look and make sure it's done to his specifications. So you, representative, you're talking about a structural engineer, a geologist, what do you think? A, a structural engineer or an inspection company that has engineers on staff that can go and inspect that and that's their business. Excellent. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about this $13 billion market. We'll be right back. Welcome back to your Real Estate Advisor. I'm Chet Wilkie. We're talking with Tom and Randy today about foundations, and we've got a caller on the air. John, are you with us still? Uh, yes, I am. How are you doing? How can we help you out today? Uh, great, thank you. Uh, just a quick question. We, uh -huh. we moved into Texas uh, last year, so this new found foundation shifting thing is brand new to us. Right. Uh, we just purchased a house about 10 years old, and uh, being away um, part of the time in the summertime, we came back and found that uh, there are cracks in the soil uh, around the garden around our house and we proceed to water it is that mm -hmm. going to affect our foundation at all or what do we do with that well uh, were the cracks right along the edge of the foundation was there a separation of the dirt separated about an inch or so from the foundation around the edge of the foundation no it's actually away from the house our house is actually sitting on a hill but ah. we see cracks down the fence line sort of okay. a thing like that and okay. they're all but they are uh, about uh, one inch apart let's see what our expert has to say Great. what do Thank you think you. what do you think tom well, uh, let me ask this. Is it a slab or a pier and beam? Uh, the house itself is a uh, slab. Slab okay. foundation. It's okay. a slab foundation. Uh, when you left, did you ha leave your irrigation system on? No, this house did not have an irrigation system. Okay. Uh, you probably need to start a pretty extensive watering program around the perimeter of that foundation. And the thing that I like to keep down evaporation is uh, soaker hoses some 18 inches away from the foundation and continue that until those cracks start to close up around the foundation. And uh, for a little more advice on that, the Foundation Repair Association has a foundation maintenance program that every new homeowner should have. And it'll give you some real easy steps to take care of the foundation. And you can actually go to txcn.com and on our website, you'll find a website and an email address that you can contact and for more information about this maintenance program. Great. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for calling a lot. Appreciate it. Okay. You know, we're talking $13 billion. That's a lot of money. And if maybe 6 or $7 million is Texas, there's a lot of work being done out there for foundations. So show us what you brought us in the way of pictures on sure. what foundations look like before they get worked on. Right. And I think we've got one coming up here. There's a hairline crack, a little bit more than that on that mortar joint. Well, uh, the normal stress point that you initially find problems around doors and windows, and this is a pretty good example of the shifting around a window. And you'll see it at the corners, top or bottom corners. And that's the first place to look around your foundation to see if you potentially have problems. It's a good clue when you see a crack around the window in the mortar joints. Now, a lot of people will, will come in and repair that stuff. They'll just point it up the mortar. They'll point the mortar and just fill it in. But they, they really haven't solved the problem, have they? They have not. They've just masked over the problem. Uh, this is a uh, picture of a foundation, I mean a chimney, and it's leaning out from the house. I can you, see the crack, yeah. Well, you can see a pretty good gap on the right side uh -huh. there. Chimneys are a weak stress point, too, because of the concentration of load, and it's extending out. Oh, my goodness. Before we talk about this picture, we've got another caller. Peggy, this is Chet Wilkie. How can we help you today? Hello? Hi, Peggy. How can uh, we help you? I'm doing fine. Uh, if you have uh, your um, foundation pulling away from your house like one inch, uh -huh. uh, what is the problem with that? 